On this video, I'm going to describe my top five Greek islands and the reasons why. Before I announce my top five, I should say what I actually like about the Greek islands because not everybody's going to have the same top five list. So first of all, I haven't visited all of them, obviously, but I have visited quite a lot. What I do prefer are the islands that generally don't have an airport because they don't then have mass tourism and preferably ones that also don't have the access for a lot of day trips from another big island which can also generate a lot of crowds. Um, I'm not really a beach person so I tend to look for islands where there's a bit more than just a beach or there's some history or uh, some other things to do on the island and I prefer the small islands with more a more traditional way of Greek life. Um, I have been learning Greek for a while. I'm still not a very good level, but I do like being able to go to these more traditional islands and be able to practice my Greek rather than the big islands with lots of mass tourism from the UK where you go into a shop and people will automatically speak to you in English. I prefer to have the opportunity to use my Greek. So in saying all that, you'll probably be surprised to hear that my number five of my top Greek islands is going to be Santorini. Of course, Santorini does have mass tourism, but it is still possible to go there and escape the crowds. And this is what I did in July last year. And so now I'll explain how. Most of the tourists who come to Santorini will stay in Thera or Ia. These are very nice places to visit for the day, but they will be crowded. That's why I recommend going inland and staying in a village such as Pyrgos, which is away from the crowds. And that's what I did last year. This location in Ia gets very crowded for the sunset over the caldera. You also have to pay to reserve a table that has a view over the caldera at sunset time. But in Pyrgos, it's possible to have the same view of the sunset without having to pay or battle your way through the crowds. You can either walk to the top of the village and there you get a view over the sea, or you can do what I did, which is walk just outside the village to the empty car park across the road, and from there you've got a view of the whole caldera and the sunset for free. From Pyrgos village, you can hike up into the hills, up to a monastery, and on the way you'll pass some other interesting ruins. And when I did this hike, despite it being July, I didn't pass another person all day. Within walking distance of Pyrgos is the very picturesque village of Megalohori. If you don't have a hire car or bike, Pyrgos has regular buses to Thera, where you can then get a bus to anywhere else on the island. The ancient archaeological site of Akrotiri is about 9 kilometres from Pyrgos. If you want to visit a beach that's not too busy, I'd recommend Perivolos. Another interesting place that I'd recommend is the abandoned village called Mesagonia. When we went there, we were the only visitors in the village at that time. I've written a blog post called Santorini Without the Crowds and I'll put a link to that in the description below the video. Number four is Kefalonia. Again, Kefalonia is a well-known, quite a large island. It doesn't have the mass tourism to the extent of Santorini. Um, but with it being such a big island, it is possible again to find places away from the crowds. We stayed in the laid-back small town of Scala. It has a long sandy beach, which is one of the main attractions of the area. The beach has plenty of empty space, even in July. Also in Scala, you can visit a Roman villa dating back to the 2nd century AD. The villa features well-preserved mosaics depicting various scenes, offering a glimpse into the luxurious lifestyle of the Roman period. The island features impressive caves such as Melisani Cave, which is an underground lake with crystal clear waters, and Drogarati Cave, known for its stalactites and stalagmites. Kefalonia boasts some of Greece's most beautiful beaches, including this one at Myrtos Bay. 
Assos is a picturesque village with traditional Ionian architecture and a Venetian castle overlooking the sea. After a huge earthquake in 1953, many buildings in Kefalonia were destroyed. However, this village of Fiscardo remained largely intact, retaining its original Venetian style buildings. From Kefalonia, it's possible to take a day trip to the tranquil nearby island of Ithaca. Number three is Halki. Halki is a small island near Rhodes. It only has one village. What I like about Halki is that it's still relatively unknown. There are day trippers who arrive from Rhodes, but not to the extent of the amount of day trippers that go to Simi, which is another nearby island. So it still remains low key. I stayed a few days on Halki and I went exploring on my own. I went hiking up in the hills to an old abandoned medieval village with a castle on top. The castle above the abandoned village is a medieval castle. From here you'll get fabulous views across the sea towards Rhodes and to the main village on Halki. My second top Greek island is Castellorizzo. Castellorizzo is one of the most remote Greek islands, situated only a couple of kilometres from Turkey. To get there from Rhodes, it's three hours by boat or 30 minutes by plane. It's a mountainous and rocky island and the airport runway is on top of a mountain. The island has a population of only a few hundred residents. At the beginning of the 20th century, the population was more than 10,000 people. There's no mass tourism here due to the remoteness and the lack of large hotels. The castle of the Knights of St. John was built on a red rock in the 14th century and has been partially destroyed during various invasions. Within the rock below the castle, you can find an old Lycian tomb, which is the only one in Greece. While the island lacks sandy beaches, it offers numerous small pebbled coves and clear waters ideal for swimming and snorkelling. On Castellorizzo you can take a short boat trip to the Blue Grotto. This is a stunning sea cave that is one of the island's main attractions. There are various hiking trails that offer scenic views and the chance to explore the island's natural landscape. This was a hike I did up to the monastery and from where you have panoramic views across the bay. And by far my favourite island, the one that gets the number one spot, is Telos. Telos is around two hours by boat from Rhodes, but it is a world away from Rhodes. Tourism in Telos is very low key as there is no airport and it's not close enough to other big islands for day trippers. Despite the islands having only low key tourism, there are enough facilities for visitors such as some grocery shops, restaurants, a bank, a pharmacy and a small clinic. The reason why Telos is my favourite Greek island is because although it's small and laid back, it offers the chance to experience traditional Greek island life as well as have an interest in historic sites to visit. Telos has several beaches dotted around the island and it's still possible to have a whole beach to yourself, especially the ones that you have to hike to. There are two abandoned villages on Telos. This one is Mikro Horio, which used to have about 1500 people living in it. You might find when you go there, you have the whole site to yourself. There are two villages on the island and a bus runs between these every hour or so and the bus also goes to some of the beaches.
The island houses a museum dedicated to the dwarf elephants that lived in Telos until about 4,000 years ago. So that completes my list of my top five Greek islands. So what's your favourite Greek island? Have you ever been to Telos or any other Greek islands that are similar to Telos? And maybe you can recommend another one to me. Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found it useful and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now. Thank you.